Welcome back to the Big Idea to Bestseller podcast. I got the one and only Travis Chapel in the house today. Now, Travis is the dude. And when I say he's the dude, I mean, this guy knows everybody, knows how to get in touch with everybody and knows how to help other people get in touch with everybody. He is a podcasting guru and I'm going to bring him in with his, his bio here in just a second. But before I do, I just want to say that Travis is one of those dudes that when you hear what he says, he knows what he's talking about. And so I encourage you as you listen to this episode to really activate and take action on the things that he says, because not only is the platform that he's created going to change your life, but the reason behind why he created this platform will change your life as well. So Travis Chapel is a door to door salesman turned founder, investor, speaker, and podcaster. He is the founder and CEO of guestio.com, the highest quality guest and show booking marketplace in the industry. He's also the co-host of the top ranked podcasts, build your network and figuring it out where he's interviewed people like Shaquille O'Neal, Rob Deerdeck, Grant Cardone, Josh Peck, Molly Bloom, Jasmine Starr, John Maxwell, and hundreds of others. In addition to being a guest on top podcasts like Bigger Pockets, EO Fire, and Born to Impact, Travis has been featured in Forbes, Entrepreneur, TechCrunch, Bloomberg, and dozens of other media outlets. When he's not working on his dream, Travis can be found at the golf course, playing pickup basketball, or at home in Las Vegas with his high school sweetheart and two kids. Travis, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, hey what's up, dude? Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So. I want to just jump straight into this, right? People heard the bio, people know you're legit. How in the world have you been able to interview some unbelievable people that we talked about in your bio, like Shaq and Grant and some of these other people? Uh, I mean, that's a, it's a difficult question to answer just because it's, it's, it makes it seem like it's uh, like only something that I could have done. But if, like, if you, if you followed from the beginning, you know, you would have seen you would have seen all the interviews that I started out with. I, I think the real answer is just like consistency and persistence over a period of time, you know, just consistently, persistently pursuing with, you know, what I felt like I wanted to achieve. Um, and eventually kind of happened, you know, like you just pick up on things, you learn, uh, you, you, you show gets more popular. It's easier to get bigger names. Um, uh, when, after your show becomes a little bit more popular or after you've already gotten some big names, um, and so it was just like a constant, uh, process of continuously improving and upgrading and never being afraid to ask the next level of person. Um, if that makes sense, a lot of people kind of disqualify themselves from, from doing it. They're just kind of like, oh, well, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not ready for that yet. And it's like, well, when are you going to be ready? You know? So I, I, I felt like I never really was like, I was asking people that were way bigger than, than I, like I was, um, at the very beginning. You know, just because it was just like, to me, it made sense. It was just, if I, if, if I was a beginner content creator, I didn't know how to create compelling and interesting content, then it made sense to me to go interview people who did. And so that's just what I did. It just seemed like, I don't know. It just seemed so linear to me at the time. It was just like, uh, well, if I can't do it, I know those people can do it. So the, the, uh, the action that I have to take more of is just simply continuing to reach out to better and better and better people and, and, uh, and continue like leveling up, you know, the, the types of people that I'm interviewing on the show, which will in turn create unique, interesting and compelling content that people actually want to listen to. I think, I mean, I think you answered that beautifully. And I know I came in kind of with like that, like, well, how'd you do it with these people? But it does happen with consistency and persistence. And when you look at podcasts, I mean, you're the podcast guy and there's so many people that start podcasts. And then they stop after five episodes, 10 episodes, or I'm sure there's some statistics around, you know, how many people make it past episode 20 or something like that. And so I'm, I'm curious to you, when you were building this, did you just know that podcasting was the answer and you were going to figure out whatever you could, or yes. was there any moment in time where you were like, maybe I need to pivot to a different avenue for the business? No, it was always podcasting. Like when I started in the, in the space, I didn't even have the intention of starting a business. I was just starting a podcast. Um, it, you know, kind of evolved over time. Uh, but yeah, at first it was all about the podcast. I invested like close to $50,000 into myself, into like coaches, mentors, masterminds, uh, information, as much as I could learn and, and as many people as I could meet all about like how to improve the podcast. You know, they're, 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 I like, I like the way that you phrase that question because that is how it was in my mind. There was no, like, there was no, if this happens, it was a, yep. when this happens. Uh, so when you come in 
to something with that level of commitment, the things that you're willing to do are greater than somebody who's coming in and just being like, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do this if it works, you know, we'll, we'll keep this up if it goes well, you know, and it's like, if you're using, if it's probably not going to go well, unless it's mm. something that's not worth getting because anything worth getting is always really difficult. And if you come into it thinking that it's not going to be, then it's not going to work out, you know, 99.9% yeah. .9 of the time, you know, because people look at the fringe examples of the people who blew up overnight and stuff like that. And it's like, can it happen? Yeah, it can happen. But I mean, if that's what you're betting on, you know, you may as well go buy a lottery ticket. Right, right. So a lot of people that listen to this show are authors or aspiring authors, and they have a book. Why would a podcast make sense? I know, I know we have a podcast I'm interviewing you right now on it, and I know what it's done for me and what it's going to continue to do for me. But if you're someone that is an author or you, you have a, a uh, book, why would a podcast or how can a podcast really help build your personal brand and ultimately increase book sales and, and your business? Yeah, the podcast is like a plugged in consistent audience that cares about what you say from week to week, day to day, month to month. A book is, uh, um, I forget who it was. There's somebody on my show recently that used the analogy of like a book is like a branding grenade. Like you, like it's a one big explosion that you put a ton of time, energy, effort into, and then you drop it and it explodes and it does a lot of damage, but then it dissipates and it disappears and it's done. And obviously some books are legacy type books and they'll continue being on bestseller lists for eight years, but that's not how the majority of, of book launches go. Um, they're still all great for credibility. They're still all great for authority. It's like, it's, it's, it's like having a really good business card yeah, to me is like having a book, you know, and there's a lot of reasons to do it other than I want to sell, you know, 50 million copies worldwide or whatever. And, uh, but, but it's a one and done, you know, you, you do it and then it's like, okay, now do I got to go to another book? Whereas like a podcast is just like a consistent way to stay in touch with people who care about hearing what you have to say. And if you are intending on writing a book and you haven't written the book yet, the podcast can be an excellent, uh, first of all, way to build an audience of people who care about what you're talking about. So when your book does come out, you actually have people lining up to buy it. Uh, that's your audience, not somebody else's that you're hoping to get in front of. Um, but then also it can help you work through the ideas for the book. Like if you, if you have a concept and, and you're thinking about writing it about this certain thing, you can go talk to a bunch of people who maybe have written books about that thing before, or there are thought leaders in that space, or they own companies, or they, you know, they they operate in that world. And you can go interview those people, get insights into the topic for your book that you never thought about while you're building the audience for your book. Um, uh, in, in the meantime. So I, I, I'm just a, such a big proponent of that. Like if you're an author and you don't have a podcast, I just think you're missing out on a lot right there. Like it, it, at least it, even if, it, if it's not a podcast, it's gotta be something that allows you to stay in touch with people. Like, uh, like James Clear had his blog and newsletter and like Mark Manson has his blog and newsletter. Um, they're both massively successful, huge name, best-selling authors. Um, and but they, they, they don't have a podcast. I don't think James Clear is a podcast. I don't think I don't know, Mark Manson doesn't. Um, but, but they, they had a way that people can consistently consume their content and build an ongoing relationship with them so that when the next book comes out, they already have a list of people that are raising their hand going like, yeah, I want that. Um, so, it, so even if it's not a podcast specifically, I just like podcasting because it gives your audience a different way to consume your content. If you're an author and people are only reading the written word from you, um, I think it's a good way to shake it up and change it up a little bit and have the podcast. But then, like I said, the podcast to me is more like effortless content creation comparatively to like sitting down and writing out a bunch of stuff. Now I may believe that just because I'm not necessarily a writer and it's easier for me to jump on a mic. Maybe somebody it's easier for them to write. I don't know. But the, the podcast to me is just like a really great way to do that. It's a great way to generate new ideas for content. It's a great way to build the audience. It's a great way to refine the ideas that you have for the book that you're writing. Um, and then, uh, and then build in an audience of people who give a crap about what you're doing. Because podcast audiences tend to be more affluent and they tend to be higher educated. Uh, they have more money to spend. They're more interested in self-improvement. And so if you have a podcast and you can get some podcast listeners to listen to your podcast and you, then you write a book, those people are a lot more likely to take you up on that. Dude, love that answer because as you're thinking about it, right? If you're trying to write a book, 
you want to have an audience who's going to buy your book. Well, a podcast can help you articulate those ideas, like you said in the beginning. Then once you have a podcast or once you have a book and you also have your podcast, you can use that to keep the book alive. You can use that to, to push more sales. You can use that to build your network. You can use your book as the basis for the podcast to further develop the brand. But now let's talk about, well, how do we use podcasting to build our audience or how do we use podcasts to build our network? And that's where you came up with guest deal, right? Is how do we get good guests for your show? And then how do you get on good shows? So talk to us about what guest deal is for people that aren't familiar. And then we're going to get into some of the, the nitty gritty of how to actually use this and use it to build your brand and your podcast and everything that you desire. Sure. So Guestio is a marketplace full of guests and shows. So if you're a podcaster, you can go book guests. If you're a guest, you can go book podcasts um, all within the same marketplace. So you have the ability to pitch shows. You can book directly with a fee. Uh, if you're willing to pay the fee first to get on somebody's show or pay the fee to get somebody on your show, um, it allows like the pay to play aspect just has to be there to bring in like the biggest quality people, names and shows and stuff like that. Cause I was trying to look for solutions to the problem before, and there are other solutions out there. And by the way, they're great. I have nothing bad to say about any of the other companies that exist that do something similar to what we do. The problem for me was that I, when I was like looking to go to those places, it wasn't because I didn't know how to find guests. It was because I was trying to level up the guests that I was talking to. And none of those you know platforms had any of the guests that I was really looking to talk to. And uh, when you ask yourself why, the answer is they already get too many res like reach outs. They already get too many pitches. They already have to say no to a bunch of things. They're not looking for more opportunities to be pitched by people that don't have audiences um, and because for them, it's a big waste of their time. So the only way to make sure that it's not a waste of their time, if they don't know you and don't know about your platform or your content or anything like that at all, is just to pay them for their time, just like you would if they were speaking on your stage. It's a, it's a podcast speaking fee. Um, or a podcast guest placement fee. Um, just like a sponsor would pay to sponsor an episode, you're a guest and you're paying to sponsor that episode as the guest. Um, but a 30 minute guest spot's way more impactful than a 30 second ad spot um, on a show. So uh, we just try to enable both sides of the marketplace to, to, to you know, do the thing that they're there to do, whether it's booking guests or booking shows. I, I'm so glad that you created this. I mean, I know that that we use it to to book podcasts. I know that um, we're constantly looking at the platform and you're continuously adding all these new features. So let's say though, you want to get on more podcasts, right? Yeah. And do you have a recommendation of, you know, how you should spend your your budget? If you have a marketing budget and you're gonna use it to get booked on shows and use Guestio, would you go for a bunch of smaller podcasts and pay whatever the, the, the smaller end of it is? Or would you say, you know what, go big and get on a bigger show and then let that kind of lead into more other opportunities because you'll have credibility. How would you kind of recommend someone um, to spend their marketing budget on a platform like Guestio? Yeah, I mean, it's totally dependent on how much money you have to market. Um, cause if you only have a thousand bucks, then to me, it's like, okay, well go get on 50 shows for 25 bucks a piece or whatever that math comes out to 40 shows for 25 bucks a piece. Um, if you have 10 grand, then it might be worth spending, you know, three to 5,000 on one or two big shows and then getting booked on 20 smaller shows after that for, like you said, cause it's easier after you have some credibility from the bigger shows. Um, got a hundred grand, you know, that, that that's a different story. So there, there's, there's different recommendations at every level uh, for anybody that has like more than 10 grand. We have a concierge service that we always recommend people to um, where we go get you booked on shows that we know are relevant for the audiences that you're looking to, to gain. Um, but yeah, if you, if you're less than 10 grand, like, you know, there's plenty of shows inside of the marketplace to go, uh, to go spend on. And I, 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 I tend to suggest doing the multiple shows thing. If you're doing shows that have less than, you know, a thousand downloads an episode, you're just going to need a, a large volume of those shows to move the needle at all. Whereas if you're doing, you know, shows that have over 10,000 downloads an episode, you only need two or three, but those ones are going to be several thousand dollars a piece if, if you're going to get on them that way. So the cool thing about Guestio is you can go in and for 97 bucks a month as a pro member, you can pitch 50 shows a month. And when you pitch the shows, they have the ability to accept the pitch for free. Um, now they may respond and say, Hey, we have a booking fee, go ahead and use that. And we'll bring you on a lot of shows will, um, give you a discount on what their standard booking fee is. If you pitch them first. Um, so you can pitch up to 50 shows a month on Guestio for 97 bucks. So if you pitch 50 shows a month for 97 bucks, you're going to get some people that are going to bring you on absolutely for free and you don't have to spend any money to book them. Um, but then if you want to, then you can of course spend some money and 
make bigger shows happen. Like we have John Lee Dumas's show on there, Entrepreneurs on Fire. They get 2 million downloads a month, but it's 4,000 bucks. So if you want to book EO Fire, you can do it. It's $4,000 to do it, but you can get on a massive show with a huge audience that will probably drive some revenue for whatever, you know, launch it is that you're doing. Yeah, dude, this is, this is so good. It's, it's great too, because when we look at this, one of the problems that I, I hear you so solve, and especially for people who are coming out with the book and they want to get on a ton of shows is you're saving them the element of time right? Yeah. Instead of having to find a bunch of shows, pitch a bunch of shows, pray you get accepted to some shows for your book launch. You can say, look, I got a thousand bucks. I'm going to go get on 40 shows at 25 bucks a pop. Now I'm going to be on 40 shows. My people are going to be talking about my book. We're going to be getting this going and you don't have to spend all that extra time. You can yep. have a VA or you could have even just do it yourself super quickly. And I think that's a huge advantage, especially if you're getting ready to do a book launch or you're really wanting to um, reignite sales and awareness around your launch or your book to then drive them to the back end of your business. So I, I love that aspect of it. Now on the flip side though, let's say you start your own podcast, right? Maybe your book's just out or maybe you're, you're taking your advice and you're kind of using a podcast to help you formulate what the book could be and to interview people who could help you get bigger and better ideas for your book. How do you kind of recommend people price a guest fee or how do you recommend people kind of understand what their show is worth? Is it based on downloads? Is it based on topic? Is it based on social media following? What are, what are some of the ways that you kind of encourage people to set a booking fee? Yeah, for shows specifically, it comes down to, in my opinion, downloads um, and then any sort of reach outside of your podcast platform. So some people may have a smaller podcast audience, but they have whatever, 40,000 people on their email list. And it's they get pretty good open rates and engagement rates on their email. So it's like, okay, well, are you going to promote this episode to your list? Because if so, you know, make sure you say that in your bio area and then add that into the price of the booking. Um, but what a lot of people will do is they'll have like a booking fee set up just for the podcast based on download numbers. And then you can do promotional upsells inside of, it's almost like a funnel where you can, if somebody, let's say, let's say you get 500 downloads an episode on your podcast. It's like, okay, well, we recommend typically a hundred dollars CPM, which means it's going to be 50 bucks for a guest spot. So that might not be like that much for you to make on that. But if you, but if, you know, it doesn't cost you that much time and that person's a good guest that you would have interviewed anyway, they're just willing to have, they just happen to be willing to pay you 50 bucks, then yeah, bring them on. And then after they commit to the 50 bucks, then you can show them different promotional upsells like, hey, oh, also, if you want me to promote this episode to my list with a link to buy your book, it's $800 extra because my list is pretty big or whatever, you know, or if you want me to do a Instagram, like a three post Instagram story with a swipe up to with a link to buy your book, you know, that's $400 or whatever. Like I'm just making up numbers here, right? But you can you can in, but you can increase how much people might pay you uh, for for show spots if you have other like promotional opportunities on top of that. Um, like if it's something where they're you know you if it's not a book, it's an affiliate launch or you're launching a course alongside of your book. It's like yeah, bring me on the show to talk about the book. But if you send an email to your list, I'll pay you for the impressions that you can get on you know, that email for this course program or whatever. Plus I'll pay you affiliate commissions on any sales that come through. Like there's other deals to be made um, is my point. So if you're, if you're a podcaster and you have an audience on the podcast and you have an audience on email, you have an audience on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or LinkedIn or wherever else, um, you know, then there's ways for you to monetize the impressions that you can give to other people. So that's the whole thing is like your job is building and creating an audience and adding value to that audience over time. And so the best way to monetize that is to give people access to that audience if they fit within the parameters of things that you typically look for. Um, so if they fit, then yeah, sure. Why not? Do you, do you find that it's a benefit? Cause your platform allows essentially a gatekeeper, right? And, mm -hmm. it, and it makes it great to, for people to be able to choose who they want and, and go from that place. Do you recommend people if they have their show um, and they're accepting guests to put as small fee, no matter what, because then you weed out the people who are just mass going after as many shows as they can, or do you recommend, you know, having kind of, you know, Hey, you could jump on the show for free. And then you try to get them on the, you know, the upsell. What are you noticing is, is best or, or most efficient for people that have their shows on guest deal? Yeah. To me, it's all about the demand. You know, like if you're a show like entrepreneur on fire, 
you know what I mean? Like you're you just like, he already gets hundreds of pitches every month in his inbox. So, you know, he's going to be really picky and he's going to charge a lot of money for it. Um, if you, if you are in a position where you're like, Hey, uh, I get like 30, 40 pitches a month too, but I'm releasing daily episodes and I, I'm struggling to get the content up. And like, you're going to want to have like a really inexpensive fee, uh, to get in touch with you. But I always recommend having a booking fee, no matter what it is. If it's, I think it's minimum on the platforms, five bucks, just like have something there. Um, because the pitches are free. People can still pitch you for free. You can turn it off and say, basically, I don't accept pitches. You can book me or not, but I don't accept pitches, but most people have the put the, the pitching feature on. So, um, you can always pitch for free. So on your booking fees, charge something just because it, I think it, you know, when you pay, you pay attention. And like I said, most people have budgets. They're just going to spend the budget on a PR firm and they're going to spend way more money on the PR firm than they're going to spend in the marketplace. And those PR firms are going to book all of the same shows that are in the marketplace for five bucks, 25 bucks. And people are going to pay them $500 to get them booked on a show that you can book in Guestio for $15. You know what I mean? So um, if you have the budget, the, the money's like, unless you have a six figure budget, the money's better spent by working directly with the creators than it is paying a PR firm to do it for you. Yeah, dude, this is this has been so good. I mean, obviously, you know, we chat a bunch offline, but there's so many more questions that I could I could give you. But for everyone that's listening right now, if you are thinking about writing a book, you should have a podcast. If you have a book, you should be on podcasts or have a podcast to keep it going. No matter where you are, having a podcast can do so much for your business and you've made it easier for people to get the guests they've always wanted and to be on the shows that they've always wanted to be on. And so I would encourage anyone who's listening to this that if you're an author right now and you're getting ready to launch your book or you have a book, but you wanna build more awareness around that in your business, use Guestio, sign up for it, test it out and really start to get yourself on a podcast tour. That's a great way to get good eyeballs at a fair price for the audience that you are trying to get in front of. So Travis, to, to wrap it up here, if there was one thing, you know, and you're constantly innovating, you're constantly looking at it. What is one thing around podcasting that maybe most people don't know, but if they did know, they'd be like, oh shit, I got to be on more shows or I got to have my own show and really build it up just like you've done with your shows. To me, it's the long-term effects of networking. The It's the, to me, best, easiest way to connect with people who maybe you didn't ever think it was possible to connect with those people. And that's going to be mostly on having your own podcast just because you can interview you know, people, whoever, whoever you want, whenever you want, um, you can reach out and pitch and try to get people on your show. And, um, it's such a perfect excuse to reach out to those people and connect with them. Um, and then whatever happens after that happens after that, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like you're going to have best, be best friends with everybody. Uh, but you know, if you interview, even if it's just one person a week, you know, that's 50 conversations over the course of a year that you would not have had otherwise with people who it would just be weird if you tried to have a conversation. You know what I mean? That like, that's the whole part about some of these cold pitches that I get from people. They don't have anything to pitch. They just want to talk. And it's like, Hey, let's chat sometime. And it's like, bro, I don't have time to just chat. Like, what are we going to chat about? Like, is there something you're trying to sell me? Is it just, just like, you just want to get to know me? Like, what are we, what are we chatting about? Like, no, send an email and tell me what you want to chat about. And then maybe we'll put it on the calendar. But like right now, the, the thing that I've realized the most is as I've continued to get busier and busier and busier is that if like the, the busier you are, the more compelling the reason the person has to give you in order to sit down and have a chat hmm. because you just don't have enough time. It's not, it's not like a, you're trying to be a, a douchebag type of a mentality or like I'm better or whatever type of mentality. It's literally just a time thing. It's like, if I have extra time right now, I'm probably gonna spend it with my kids. Cause I don't like, I travel a lot. I work a lot. And, uh, when I have free time, I'm not like looking for calls to put on my calendar with random people in my LinkedIn inbox, you know, and it's like, I'd rather just go hang out with my kids for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So like, 100%. if you want to get some of my time and this goes for any busy person, not just me, but now I can almost speak to it from the busy person perspective that I didn't have when I first started, which is, which is now it's like, if you want to get some of my time, like there's gotta be some sort of a reason to do it. And being on a podcast is a reason to do it right? It's like, even if, even if the podcast that's interviewing me has, you know, 340 downloads an episode, it's still like, okay, well, you know, if one tenth of that audience actually listens to the full episode, it's like, well, 35 people who'd never heard of me before now know a lot about me and spent 30, 45 minutes with me being interviewed by a host that they already know, like, and trust. 
So like those people that are coming into my world from that are going to know, like, and trust me more than any other type of like discovery that they're going to see, including the money I spend on Facebook ads or Google ads or YouTube or any other money I spend on any other form of advertising. Like the people that come from this interview with me and you right now, Jake, are going to trust me more inherently just because they know, like, and trust you. And so some people are going to listen to me and be like, I don't like that guy, but they're not going to follow me. You know what I mean? But some people are going to listen and be like, oh, that sounds like, like we seem to have similar values. And if they start following me because they like and trust you, that type of relationship right off the bat is so much stronger. So like it helps you build relationships with people that you don't even know you're building relationships with, but it also helps you build relationships with the people that you're interviewing. And then it helps you build relationships with people that you're being interviewed by. And all of those things are good things, especially when you fast forward that over five to 10 years. It's like, we're coming up on episode 800 of Build Your Network. We've interviewed hundreds of people on the show. If you fast forward that over a long period of time, like it starts to compound. And then people know you because they know somebody that, that you interviewed two years ago and they knew that person. And now they know you because that person told them, you know what I'm saying? Like it just like that effect continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. So it's, I, I just don't view it as it's at, like, it's ever been a waste of time because I just don't think that it is. Dude, I love that. What an amazing way to wrap up. So for anyone that wants to check out Guestio or follow along because they do enjoy you on the show um, and they know that you're legit, how do we follow you? How do we sign up for Guestio? How do we kind of uh, continue to learn from you? Yeah, for Guestio, it's just guestio.com, guestio.com, like be a guest, io.com. Um, and then uh, and then my stuff is over at travischapel.com. I mean, all of my social links and channels and everything like that is over there, including Guestio. Um, so it's kind of like the hub. So you can go over there, check out some of the stuff we have going on and look forward to connect with you. Beautiful, man. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Everybody go check out Travis, check out Guestio. I highly encourage you to, to check out the platform. I use it, we recommend it. And it's something that I think is changing the game. So as always, everyone that's listening, I appreciate your time, your energy and your attention. And Travis, Thanks for being on the show, my man. Can't wait for everyone to connect with you and continue to learn from you. Thanks for having me, man. Always a pleasure to, to hang out and chat. Awesome. Take care, everybody.